Welcome back and we are talking a little bit more about anatomy and trying to simplify anatomy a little bit more because I think, and this is a mistake that I've made a lot in the past, is overcomplicating things. Looking at something like, like the pecs and saying there are all these different functions. They can be internal rotators, they can be shoulder flexors, they can be AD ductors, and then thinking of it as this laundry list of things that you have to do to activate the pecs. And you were telling me that that's actually quite, um, quite incorrect as a, way to, as a process to be going through yeah. to understand movement. So what do you think is a better option out there? So I think the best way to look at muscle function is to understand the global movement for that tissue. So for instance, if we take like the clavicular pec, for example, is understanding, well, the clavicular pec's muscle is like, well, or I mean, it's, its motion is, well, it's when this origin to insertion is fully stretched and it moves in a path to where that is fully shortened, right? So the, what is clavicular pec motion? It's that. What is that called? Shoulder flexion, extension, adduction, rotate, like, I don't know, you could put a list of like 50 things in there, but the mm -hmm. thing is, is it's none of those things. It's a sum of a whole bunch of things, but if you forget about all of the pieces and just focus on what that actual thing is, that I think is going to give you a better, like not only a visual representation of what it is, but a better idea of what you want to accomplish in training. Because if you focus on the list of things and trying to accomplish them separately, you're actually going to distort the motion because none of them happens in isolation. So yeah, the, the pec, if I'm going from this position to this position, there's going to be some internal rotation mm -hmm. from this position, right? But also like, well, from this position, the pec's actually gonna be an external rotator. So it, the pec motion is always just taking that that position and pulling it towards the the origin. So as soon as I understand that, well, regardless of where this is coming from, it's just going to approximate that same position. So it's always a target of where that shortened position is, right? So once you understand that, you realize that, well, if I'm out here and I cued internal rotation, that's not actually PEC that's doing that internal rotation. The internal rotation just happens to be a part of this global motion and should happen on its own. As long as I focus on the global motion, all of those little pieces will come when and to the degree that they're supposed to come. But if I consciously chase the individual pieces, I'll miss the goal as a whole. Mm -hmm. That makes a lot of sense. I mean, it's just this problem of um, overly reducing something mm -hmm. to its tiny little detail. Thing. That's, that must be the answer. And then yeah. forgetting the whole, I guess, the forest for the trees. Mm -hmm. And so that's what you would say probably the best way to be learning anatomy is not in the textbook. Yeah. But more so it's in, in the gym. Yeah, it's, it's, you have to be able to learn it, both the motion on you, but understand how to conceptualize it visually. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, if you're doing a bench press, you're not getting quizzed on, you know, what well, what, what is the vocabulary that right. goes with? You're getting quizzed on your proficiency to be able to perform that movement in the path that you want. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I tell people all the time that, like, I don't care if you know the names of all these things. If you actually understand the global movement and you can look and you can recognize whether it's correct or not, it doesn't matter what words you use to get people to do the right path as long as you use the right path. Mm -hmm. Right, so having having a really complicated vocabulary of a bunch of like you know reduced forms of something isn't necessarily going to make you a better coach. It might actually make you a worse coach because you will start focusing on those little points. So, sure. a lot of times when you're working with people, it goes back to uh, almost focusing on external cues mm -hmm. to get an internal result. So it's like, I will use like, hey, bring your arm over to here. Like, oh, okay, right? Did I tell them to protract more? No, I just gave them a visual goal and had them learn it. Because I don't want them to learn that, okay, I go, f I do some like uh, adduction and then I do some rotate. Like, I don't want them to learn 30 steps. I want them to figure out what the movement is, be able to have like a visual and a both like proprioceptive awareness of those movement patterns as a whole. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Simple, I love it. Something to think about, guys, to make anatomy a little bit more accessible, mm -hmm. a lot more easy for you to handle, and a lot less overwhelming, trying to remember 25 billion different anatomical cues. So have a good think about that. See you guys next time.